<laughs> Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Zero. Uh, I just wanted to tell you guys something real quick. Even though I enjoy the um, the premium content donations that I make from this show, I have decided to make this show for free uh, so that everyone can get it because I think it needs to be heard. And it saved my life, so I want to save everybody's life, and I don't want them to uh, not do it. Now, what I may do is at a $5 option, if you'd like to support the show, uh, you can. If you keep at the 15 level, you get all my other shows, and I add a ton of stuff. So I just wanted you to know that I've always felt really bad about doing a spiritual show behind a paywall. I kind of needed it at that moment. But now, blessings in my life, I do not. And I would like to give it away because zero is for the people. And that's it. So that, that, I love you all. Thank you for coming on a journey. It's only going to get better, bigger, faster, stronger, or it may not. And it just may be <laughs> us. And who cares? That's all I care about. What I am excited about is our the, our next guest here. Uh, he's been on my show many times, this show, Tim Fole Hat, And uh, I love him very much. His podcast is Skeptico, and it's Alex Sakaris. Did I get it? Did I get you? Nailed I, it. You freaking nailed it. Alex, I got to be honest with you, man. You're a class act. I really like you. You have great energy. You have really great vibrations. And it's like, I don't know what you've done with your life. I know that you've done well. And that I always like when I meet successful people that still have light in them. That that it gives it should give everybody hope. So I just wanted you to know that I got none but mad love for you. And I'm super excited that we're talking again. Ditto. Same way. You know, it's excited to be here. No, but I'm going to push you, man, because that's what Skeptico is about. So I'm going to poke at you. But uh, no, love, love you. Loved you on Rogan, man. Congrats. Thank you, man. Uh, I love that guy. You know, I've been getting a lot of crap from everybody for defending him. But people don't realize, man, like, if you go back to almost every one of my albums, I think except for my very first one, I think I thank him on every album. Even that's way before the Joe Rogan experience. So I'm a ride or die guy. I defend my friends and I will do it to the end. And if I'm seen as some weirdo because, you know, I'm blood in, blood out, then so be it. So thank well, you, you for that. You know, it's funny with Rogan because I kind of go back and forth, but lately... I've been kind of going more homo on Rogan, you know, because I'm starting to, to maybe believe that he is really more legit than I kind of thought. And you know what, from a spiritual standpoint, uh, you know, I wanted to bring this up with you because I thought it was cool and you could relate to it because you can relate to Rogan. But I was hearing him the other day and he's talking about the voice. And I'm like, fuck, now he's talking about the voice. Now he's talking about the real shit, the voice inside our head. Because that's what it's about, right, Sam? I mean, it's I that voice, that. right? And and so he's telling the story, and he's telling it from this, you know, workout thing, like he's kind of crazy with his workouts and all of this stuff, but really over the top. And he's talking about uh, Goggins, you know, David Goggins. And he goes, yeah, you know, sometimes Goggins says he'll fucking stare at his shoes for 30 minutes. You know, like Goggins, who's like, you know, go, 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 go. I'm doing it because you're not fucking doing it. You know, and he says, Goggins staring at his shoes. I go, ooh, they get it. It's the voice. You know, my thing is I, I do, I've been doing the ice bath for years, you know. And what I always tell people is, uh, you know, I got a freezer I converted and it's, you know, all the ice in there. And, and I go, no, man, it's about yoga. It ain't about like, uh, you know, uh, health benefits or muscle it's about every day literally i that voice goes off and is giving me all these excuses why not to get in that ice <sighs> it's like you did it yesterday it's raining outside come on it's winter this is solstice every day it's like i try and put the voice down and it still comes up so now you know for people i don't have a very stressful life so it's almost like a gift for that voice to rear its head and just expose itself for the phony fuck it is, you know, cause it's phony, it's phony. It's just constructing all this crazy stuff in my head. So I, I, I did connect with 
uh, with Rogan when he was talking about the voice. And then when you were on there and I love the way this is a minor thing, but I love the way you handled the, Hey man, do you want to get high? You know, which I almost, I mean, that almost pissed me off because he like knows you're sober, man. Yeah. You know, he wasn't serious. He was joking because he he's very happy. I'm sober. And, but he was just like having fun with me for the moment because later on that night, we were um, at a club. I was performing with him, and I like I like to watch Rogan work. I just, I'm a big fan of uh, of a lot of stuff that he does, and I love his stand up. I've always been a big fan of his stand up, and I was really excited because I knew he was about to start recording. So um, he was in there, and he smokes fat blunts, bro. He smokes fat blunts, and he's going to pass, and he hands it my way, and I was just gonna pass it on. Because weed's not my thing. I, I'm I'm never tempted to smoke weed. It does. It's not my thing. But he goes, "Hey man, no, you can't do it." And I go, "Bro, I'm just passing it. I don't, I don't want it." And it was very interesting because I forgot to talk about this because I was at another show. We we started late, and Alex, I'm very thank you, thankful for you for being understanding. So thank you. Um, but I was at a show, and someone in the green room busted out some cocaine. And it was very weird because I went on this kind of, um, not the show that was at, but another show a couple of days ago. And I went on this uh, this kind of like weird voyage of emotions with it. Like the first time I was like, oh my God, someone's doing coke. Like that's how far from coke I was. And then I was like, why are you doing coke? It's like, don't you know about fentanyl? And then I was like, whoa, someone's doing coke. Rock is back. It was like this weird kind of, journey but i also see the people that i know still doing coke and there's not a lot of light in their eyes there's a lot of gray and i i get that i get it because i remember looking at myself in the mirror after i'd been on a run and i would be like there's no light in me i'm very gray right now i'm dehydrated i still between you and me i've never really talked about i think my legs have felt the effects of the years of drug abuse and and being um not drinking a lot of water while I was running and gunning. So I have to do you brought up yoga. I got very excited. I my girlfriend thinks I'm seeing the yoga instructor on YouTube. <laughs> she thinks I'm dating the the Canadian yoga instructor because I'm always doing yoga. I try to do yoga every day. I, I told 30 minutes. Maybe I'll do 20 early and then 10 or 15 20 at the end or or i'll bang out 30 at the end but i'm really really getting into it because it's it's uh it's been it's so hard for me because i'm so um not limber that it's like this fun kind of challenge i know is really good for me i love yoga i i you know you can call me cali guy but yoga is like when you start yoga and you can't do downward dog, it seems so painful. And then when you can just start banging out downward dog, it's the best feeling ever. Hey, that's awesome. Hey, I just got it. You know, I'm such a, a yogi. I've been doing it for so long. Best yogi, one of the best, in my opinion, and no one gives him props for this, understands him, Wim Hof. Yeah. Go watch, go watch his yoga, 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 exercise. Yo, like Wim Hof, if you go listen to his story and shit, 12 years old he's putting together like a comic book you know of yoga of the poses cutting them out of magazines and putting them together he's all about the poses and the key thing that he really understands is the breath work associated with it because a lot of times the the yoga today what they've kind of uh, messed up because they it's a it's a club oriented you know class oriented you know follow the teacher sage on the stage kind of thing it's all about the breath. The, it's a, like my teacher said a long time, long time ago, it's a, it's a dance and the breath is leading the dance. So if you get in a class or if somebody's telling you, okay, breathe in, breathe out. No, you breathe according to your body's motion. And, uh, and you're, and so working that breath is just, there you go. Oh, I could talk about you for a long time. But no, I love breath, it, man. Watch I love it. Uh, I'm not the best at pigeon. I have weird uh, legs. One, you know, none of, but it's none of that like, matters. None of that matters. It's about getting in touch. Increments is like the biggest joy ever. It's like it's like my my kids being born, Patrick Ewing being drafted by the Knicks. One day uh, I'm on the one on one. There's nobody, and then incrementally, the just getting a little bit 
deeper into a yoga pose is like oh. my favorite things. Awesome. That's beautiful. I love that. I love, I mean, it's just like, because I, I stopped jujitsu because I was really upset that I wasn't limber as my good friend who now has a black belt and open, owned his own school. So I was like, eh, I'm not going to do it. But I think I was beat my, because I like, even though I, I have this weird thing where like, and with comedy, it's, it's kind of the same thing where I just want to be the best. Like I would watch people that are like super successful and I never wanted them not to do well. I always just wanted to be there with them. Like I want you to succeed, but I want to succeed too. I want to be right there. succeed. So I want us both. I want us all to succeed. And I just want to be one of those in the group. And so, you know, I do that with almost everything I do. Uh, I want everyone to be great. So, I really beat myself up in in, in jujitsu because I was just like, oh, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't. And then I just ran out. And it's so interesting. I know you got a lot to want to talk about, but I'm really working on my daughter. On her, she says can't a lot. She loves to say can't. Now she's two. She's uh she's one month from three, but she says can't a lot. And I'm just constantly trying. To teach her words, I'm already like words are magic. Okay, you're putting out magic spells, and we have to practice abundance. And children have no clue about abundance. They <laughs> don't understand that giving it away brings more to them. They don't understand that yet. If you if the kid is playing with your horsey, that is war. That is war. We like we are going to war. You are holding my horsey. That is, that is my horsey. You are not me. We want baby war. And it's like, it's the talk down. It's like, we're sharing. This is, I go, it's called the model of abundance. You're, you've got to practice two things at all time, little one. You got to practice law of attraction and model of abundance. And you will vibrate on a higher level. Bro, I'm telling you, I, I got four kids. And the one thing that I've learned that's super humbling is you can't control that shit. I mean, they are, they are what they are, you know, they uh, are my, what they are. My oldest, I'll never forget to tell this story all the time. Kid negotiator from the beginning, you're the age, of your daughter at the store, go up to my wife with two of the things and say, how about one? You know, hold them up. Say, how about one? I'm not going to ask for two. You think I'm going to ask for two, don't you motherfucker? I just, oh, how about one? Brilliant. But, but you, you know, the, the thing that I was going to say, it is and you are are like because you are you you know and like when you first came on with tinfoil hat i remember because i was you know i've been doing my thing for a, a long time just to keep myself straight in terms of trying to figure this stuff out that was my sole purpose i didn't i didn't have any kind of entertainment i was just be be entertaining enough that everyone doesn't completely ignore you so you can continue to do this but when you came on the one thing that you brought was just this like you said this love and openness for everybody because all this in this little conspiracy world everyone's kind of throwing arrows and stuff and you're yeah. like no man big tent everybody come on in what do you got bring it bring it and and with a and that with a bring it in so i can stab you in the back but just bring it in and I, I, everyone I hear talk about Sam Tripoli, that's always the vibe that they got is just I good dude. It. That means a lot to me. But it's like this, you know, because I, I, I brought that from comedy because, you know, I started in the 90s and it was very much like boxing. And the, some of the big comics would say, hey, man, this ain't team sport, man. It's one for, and I'm like, interesting. But then I <laughs> just remember all the, I go, well, all these groups kind of rise together. And even if maybe they weren't my favorite group of comics but they all kind of work together so i remember that i remember what because like in podcasting comedians were starting to all do each other's shows and i was like oh that's kind of that's that's changing the game for comedians we're no longer you and i are fighting over that one hosting gig or that one movie role now we both can share each other's uh shows like the inventor of the swap cast is is um kind of like what we're doing right now is Doug Stanhope. Doug Stanhope was out of being too lazy to want to record two episodes. He's like, let's record one and we'll both put it out. And that, you know, I was very lucky, you know, Doug, uh, Duncan Trussell, 
they both did swap cast with me very early and I was very blessed. So I, I took, I, cause I remember the, I'm not going to say who it was, but I remember he's like, Oh, that's my competition. I go, Oh man, there's no competition. Everybody's there's so much for an, enough. It's like, even in the saturated world of podcasting and content creating, there is not enough content creators. I, even at my age of 50 years old, am like constantly trying to refresh my timeline to see if there's anything that I can can uh, digest. And so there's not enough. We need more, even though there's too much. We still need more. And people need to understand that. No, I, I think that's tricky for a lot of people to get but it, it, it's just been proven true to the point where it's not even controversial anymore i mean look at how it's blown up no one could have seen this so i mean it's just yeah it's become it's become super it obvious crazy but. man and it's like there's just these hermetic principles of life that i i apply to my life to the best of my ability and they just work out it all works out. And, you know, I'm really good with God. Uh, you know, I'm not in any religion in terms of like organized religion, uh, but I'm really spiritual. And I don't know, man, when I do certain things, my I vibrate on a higher level. Like, you know, like you're you have a high vibrational level. You like you 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 emit wonderful energy. So it's like you do, you you do, you do, you you burst, man. And I think that's important for people to understand like that's what it comes from. It's like helping others helps you vibrate on another level, sharing stuff. You know, you're in you're in I, I say this on every podcast, so I'm sure people get bored of hearing it. But like the truth is, man, if you're like having money problems, give away some cash. It just always has helped me. And I'm always amazed at how much the universe pays me back. And I don't do it for that. I do it because it's a bun. It's like you know, I was having a conversation with a good friend of mine today about all these like somewhat psychopath comedians who have made it. And sometimes, you know, you know, th there's a couple that are nice guys now. They've learned their ways. And I always will say you have to give people a chance to prove themselves from the mistakes. I know if nobody gave me another chance, I would be I would be alone in the world. So I've had many people give me second chances. So you know, you got to give these people second chance. One of those people is Dane Cook. Like I've had wonderful conversations with Dane Cook. Dane, young Dane Cook w w thought the world was a Highlander. Like where there could be only one. And new Dane Cook is like, he knows how the game is played. And it's ever, and that has been demonized how to play the game, but that is 100% the world. And so he's learned it. So I root for him. But you go, why does somebody like that, that was very much somebody who just, it was like, there could be only one. Why does that guy make it to the top? Because he practices the law of attraction, which is, I believe in my, myself so much. I'm putting out that energy that I'm the Michael Jordan of this motherfucking shit. And that gets you to the top very much. But you know what? If you don't practice abundance, okay, with law of attraction, you lose it, in my humble opinion, you lose it all. So you got to will it to happen, and then you got to give it away. You got to help those behind you, those in the lower, lifting people up, lifting people up, saying nice things, helping people, give it away. Why be on the top of the pyramid, man, by yourself when you can have friends, you know? Well, I'm, I'm down with you part of the way, except some big exceptions there. One, as someone who's been kind of money oriented my whole life because i'm greek i can't explain i can't i can't, no, I can't help it you know no, greek orthodox no. church the guys in the back that's all they're talking about is hey what do you got on what you make it but there, there there are certain laws and principles i think that you know people are all over the internet exploding how to make money how to make money how to make money and how to make wealth and most of it's bullshit but uh, the one thing I think from YouTube University has really given us is there's a lot of really good stuff out there too. And there's laws and, and you did, uh, you still do your money show. You still yeah, do. I your... still do it. It's a very niche show and that's fine. You know, I love it though. We, I do it with a good friend of mine, Howie Dewey and, and, and uh, Johnny Woodard. And yeah, man, we just like to help people. Most of my brands are helping people figure their shit out. 
that's what I want to do, whether it's spiritual, whether it's what's going on in the world or how to take control of your life, how to be the first, how to be the first responder to your problems. Like that's everything to me. Yeah. So anyways, we can talk about that. Some I want to hear time, about it. No, I, I just think, I think money is, is misunderstood in terms of uh, there's some principles that are, you know, like even the, the law of attraction thing. I mean, fuck, it don't matter, you know, if you tape a fucking Range Rover to your uh, fridge and stare at it every day, you know, or, or, or let's say, let's say it does, let's say you can bend the universe that way because, you know, parapsychology and uh, just metaphysics says that there's some reality to uh to that right I, I would not deny the reality that you can manifest stuff but if you want it's a statistical game it is what the, the science will tell you is that you know statistically most people who don't try and manifest a gold coin in their hand most people can't do it or they do it you know but if you apply some of the basic principles of kind of money and money making and that everyone's been talked about for the longest time and you know think and grow rich who turns out to be a, a, a fraudster by the way napoleon hill he didn't write any of that shit he had somebody else write for him and he Whoa, was quite a scam bombs yeah but but very interesting there you know and uh like oh, oh you I know heard what that about albert einstein i heard no. that, uh, yeah that his no, I don't wife believe wrote that. a lot of I don't believe kids. that. That's why I've no. heard, bro. That's why I've heard to position him to limited hangout shit because they want their guy to have it, not somebody else. It's interesting. It's interesting. But I want to get in some. So, I mean, I've been having some wonderful conversations on the show. And one of them was about trans surfing. And I'm going to do the same joke I always do. It's not about cross dressers in Hawaii, okay? It's about this belief that there are multiple there's every version of you exists at the same time the question is how far are you away from that version of you and then it becomes what's going to take for you to get to there and that to me is what we're about you're like well you can't manifest a coin in your hand right but how far away are you from getting a gold coin and what does it take to get you to that gold coin? So, I mean, for me, man, manifestation is really a choose your own adventure in a weird way where you're, you're deciding what turns you're taking in a hopes of getting to the end of the story. That's if that makes any sense at all. It's like, I always tell people when they get sober and I need to shut up because I'm not letting you talk enough, but I, I, um, I always say when you get sober, have a destination. Like, what do you want to do sober? Like, and you know, and people go, I want to be president. If we're going by this trans surfing thing, there's you and presidency is so far up here that it may take forever you to even get close to that. Who knows? But maybe you could be president of your book club or whatever <laughs> you want within that realm that is close enough. It's just there. It's like that movie, everything, everywhere, all at once is the greatest movie ever because or it's in my top five, literally, because it's this notion that there's a million versions of you, an infinite amount of versions of you, and they're all inside you. You just have to figure out how to tap into those things. And that's kind of where I'm at. I know it's a lot of woo woo, but I don't no, know. No, no, no. It's, it's not woo woo to me. And, and, and I'm interested in like, like back to Rogan, one of the things that I guess I could never square with Rogan is I don't totally trust people who are not sober. Now, That's you know, I, I, I just can't, it, it, you know, my uh, head at my family, mom, addict, you know, died an addict, drugs, alcohol. Uh, I, I was never had a huge problem, but you know, enjoyed drinking and drinking just like everybody else, you know, a lot and stuff like that. And it's when I got married and it was kind of interfering right off the bat, you know, year one, you know, and it's like, whoa, this is just not going to go well. And then I got really mad at a point. I was like, well, how did I get sucked into this? How did I get sucked into the idea that being a man is somehow associated with, you know, all this stuff, you know, and it felt like a lot of the mind control stuff that we, you know, I'll talk about and kind of see 
obviously happening. So I'm super interested for, for, but then I don't know about the sober thing, the way, like, how do you deal with the all or nothing part of the, of the sober thing? Do you feel like, in the thing, do you feel like it's a disease when people say it's a disease? Do you relate to it in that way? Or what do you I'm think? I'm fine with that lingo because it doesn't, uh, it doesn't mean anything to me. I think that's, if maybe that's some way, a, I, in a disease like a vir- venereal disease, no, but maybe in terms of a mental disease, it's possible, you know, the cravings, the inability to stop, it's possible. But I, I get more into the hermetic principles of dual, duality and that there we have light and dark in us. And some of our darkness is a little darker and we got to learn how to deal with that darkness. But we also have to re- recognize that that darkness is constantly inside us. So I use that to propel me to be a better sober person because I know that person's inside me that if I don't do simple things like connect with others, call others, check in on others, help others through my experience, strength and help, which like, dude, when I joined AA, I would have told you that's all bullshit to tell people that to have people who have no will to stop using drugs, that they have to get this thing outside them because they, they, they'll they let themselves down so they can't let this person down, which is the most ridiculous thing. And it's not until you start studying, like conspiracies always lead to spirituality. And this thing is like, if they're lying to us about this, what else are they lying to us about? And it always gets to, this is a war, a spiritual war. It has nothing to do with money. They got all the money. They have all the power. They want depopulation. They want less of us because they've made deals with, in my humble opinion, deep down back, Anunnaki, Archons, Fallen Angel. I think they're all the same thing. It just depends who you're talking to, my humble opinion. And, um, you know, are, are we, is this a realm that this, this, the one created for us to come down and learn kar- karma? Or is this, the the uh, demiurge wanted to be God and created a false reality, and these archons are the people that keep it running, and we're we're batteries. I don't know, man. I really don't know. I love. I just love the discussion. Well, I want to take. I want to rewind the tape there for a minute because, like, one of the things I think is interesting about what you're talking about, and I think this is like with the uh, with the addiction thing. That in a way that, see, I think the addiction thing gets distorted in the sense that it makes, it's bullshit. We all relate to it. We we relate to it so much more than we admit. And here's the point that I think it's like anyone, I can't, I can't put Haagen-Dazs in the freezer, right? Because then I cannot walk past the freezer get without getting that pint, you know, finished off. Now that's like a minor thing. Who cares? But it's like the same thing. It's like, you know, I told you a minute ago that my wife's a forensic psychologist and she's worked in prisons and she's worked with people, life without parole and serial killers and stuff like that. I said, okay, so what do you, what do you think that's about? You know, the worst of the worst, you know, like really, really bad serial killers. She goes, well, you know, I had to push her and she goes, I think it's about control. You know, I think it's about control. And I thought, wow, isn't that, And, and then I thought, you know, if you read some of the stories about the worst of the worst of these folks and even the ones who come into you know demonic possession or feel like they had that kind of spirit there it's the same thing it's like these little decisions that they make it's these combination the the, the accumulation of all these little decisions we make i think it's so much more relatable i think the aa thing that you're talking about is so much more uh relatable in terms of how we construct all this crazy stuff with that voice again that's in our head and how we listen to it and take control of it. And when we get in good spirit with other people and they're cool and we hang out and it just, doesn't it just soften up the voice? Isn't it, you know, even when you just have a good conversation like we're having and you say, wow, I can really relate to Sam. He really is the good authentic person 
that I, I, I thought he was. It, it, even just saying that, because I know it's true to me, it warms my heart. It makes me feel that, you know, my voice is not as crazy. It doesn't have to be as crazy as I think it is. And, and I don't need it. And I can get past it. And, and then I can, because, <laughs> because I think a lot of the things that we see of the worst of the worst, the Schwabian kind of craziness and the, all the rest of it is just people that have gone too far with some very basic stuff that we're all dealing with. And if they're making deals with the devil, I, I think we can all relate how you could get there, how any of us could get there just with a series of uh, decisions of, you know, deciding not to get on that yoga mat, you know, because, oh, I don't need it. I, you know, I think it's just... interesting, dude. I think it's really interesting. You know, I've really um, stopped watching murder entertainment. Uh, I just I think it's it's so weird. That I live in a world where jokes uh, hurt people's feelings. But yet these same people will run home to watch the first 48 or the ID channel or this new, this show that's pretty popular on, um, you know, Netflix called I Am a Killer, or even Soft White Underbelly. Like, that guy does an amazing job of interviewing these people. I just, it's just the trauma that people go through in their early life. You know, it's just hurt people hurt people. And it's just like, at what point do we go, man, I mean, like, yeah, they did something nasty. And there's a price to pay with that. But do we also have an understanding that they came into this world, a loving, beautiful thing and trauma happened. And like, it was what I was going to say to you earlier, because you were bringing up that people are on their path and you know what, man, my parents were perfect, but man, I'm so blessed to have them as parents. My dad, as much as trauma, he would tell me how much trauma he went through as a kid. I talked about this on the last episode. It makes me understand him a lot more and have some compassion for him because he did burn everything down. And now I understand why his grandma was hitting him when he was a kid. Your grandma's supposed to be nothing but pure love. Your grandma's whacking you and punching your head and you're 70 still talking about it. You know, I mean, like, you know, the last episode when we brought up what happened to Ted Kaczynski. At six months old, he was strapped down for seven days and nobody touched him or helped him because he had all these weird itching, scratching things going on. He was never the same after that. And then everywhere he goes, there's just more trauma till now he's in maximum security and solitary confinement, and which maybe seems what his skill set now is made for because of all the trauma he went through. And so it's just, it's it's an interesting thing. And like my next door neighbors growing up, I couldn't love people more. They drank, they drink every night of their life. And they're just, and if you saw them, you wouldn't believe it. You're like, you guys party that much? God bless you. I can't do it. I just, I want to set the high score every night. I want to, I want to be a rock star, shit face, drunk, high, to just laying into my vices, you know, trying to create See, but here's my here's my skeptical thing is I, I I don't I don't trust it because it's not in my experience to know to think that you can you can get high and still function at the highest level. It just doesn't seem to work. I don't know anyone it works for. I've never seen my my life, I've just never seen anyone who's getting high. And now with weed, it's so and, and it's tough because it's in my family, you know, it's not like I'm I'm not like my family's perfect. But you're getting high all the time. Bro, you're just the light cannot come through. It's just you're blocking the light. It's like it just doesn't work any other way. I, you get, I get it, man. I guess there's just some people that they're white. But again, you don't know what they would do if they weren't drinking or doing drugs at all. You don't know if they're amazing now, what would they be doing? What what could they create with no drugs, no alcohol? So my whole thing is this, you know, um, uh, this new weed is like not your grandpa's weed. It is Frankenstein weed and is causing people to have like almost in some weird way, almost like these, these psychological cracks 
kind of like what we've seen in crystal meth forever. And you got to really ask yourself if something's everywhere all the time, why is that? And I also get into what, what is there's, there's something of something being legal and something being morally right. And sometimes they're not the same thing. And there's some things should be like pornography, right? I've had a problem with porn. I've been blessed. I've gone some time now without watching it. But in my addiction, I was setting high scores in that stuff, <laughs> right? Now, I think porn should be legal because if you take that away, you're just going to send this thing underground and it's going to get more dangerous for these people. You're not going to stop it. The minute somebody invented a camera, there was some chick doing weird stuff in front of it. It's just the way it is, okay? But morally, I don't know, man. It's a weird industry where as soon as someone quits, you never hear from them again. They don't want to be asked about it. They don't like to do it. They they regret doing it. They talk about it all the time. No, I regret. I wish I hadn't done it. That's how we get asked. It's You can do it. You can do it. But vibrationally, what are you getting into? And, uh, you know, go on. Sorry. No, no, I, 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 I agree. And I do bring it back to the voice thing. And maybe this is too abstract and maybe people don't get it. But like to, to me, like when I first started Skeptical, one of the things that I found really, really interesting, you know, back to like one of the first things we connected on is this idea that conspiracy leads to spirituality and spirituality leads to conspiracy. So I was interested in, you know, why it seemed to me that from kind of my understanding of spirituality and non-duality was that, you know, there's a voice inside your head, you go talk to the Buddhist, you go talk to, you know, the non-dual, the yogis, all those people, it's the voice inside your head, and you're going to try and quiet that voice, you know, you're going to try and put it to rest a little bit so you can find peace, you know, and then I turned to science and science was saying, no, oh, bro, there ain't no vo what you, voice. There's no, there's no voice. There's no voice. This is a, your brain is just generating all that. There's nothing there to stop or to manipulate or to manage or anything like that. And it's again, it's like, why are they saying that when everybody knows they got a voice inside their head, you know? And by the way, just bounce around on stuff because we're just talking about stuff. You know, that's the that's what kind of turned me on to yoga uh, is I've told the story many times, but I was like uh, 30 years old and did my first yoga class uh, on TV. You know, like you're saying on the YouTube, this is back on TV, the woman on PBS. And at the end, she goes, OK, do Shavasana and now uh, rest for a minute and, you know, do. Uh, yeah, do Shavasana at the end, you know, and let let your mind not talk anymore. And I, I swear to God, Sam, uh, for like a half a second my mind shut down. And I was like, it, it was a changing moment for my life because up until that point, I didn't think I was in there if the voice wasn't in there. If the voice wasn't in there, I didn't think there was anything else, you know? So to, to, to understand that distinction, which I understand now, which is that voice is saying all sorts of crazy stuff about how I need weed or how I need Coke or, you know, one more drink or just whatever the hell it is, you know, at the point, it all to me, once you really confront the voice and realize how ridiculous it is, it's also telling you, well, I mean, what does the voice tell you? Everybody knows. Does the voice, does the voice inside your head, does it regularly tell you what a really deep, soulful and genuinely beautiful person you are or does it tell you what a fuck up you are and how many mistakes you've made and how you didn't even call your freaking daughter today and what are you and you know I, uh, which which voice is in your head i mean i i tell you you know i i think we all know the voice that's usually there yeah it's crazy i never really thought about it like that this kind of inner voice that is like you know, it's my favorite line from Waiting for Guthman. And it's like, she goes, I've learned to not trust my instincts. Like, and I was like, that's the funniest thing I've ever heard in my life, especially when you're talking about improv, but just talking in general, 
It's like, I'm not going to trust my instinct, which is that little voice that will tell you. And like, I guess, man, for me, that voice, I've learned to rewire it. So it's saying different things. And I, I've really learned that because I come from very paranoid people, which is my father used to give me crime boss advice on how to deal with people. And I would look back and I'd be like, oh, my God, what was that advice, man? And I, it was because his dad told him that. And this is so, you know, I've had this conversation again on the last episode about stopping the generational trauma of like, I'm not going to instill my daughters that this person's jealous of you because of how great you are. It's an awful way to go through life. I've learned in life, probably most people don't realize what they're doing. They're, if they do give you some shit, it's probably a drive-by shooting. They're not meaning to hit you. They're just pulling the trigger and whoever they hit, they hit. So I have, and that is like why I do a gratitude list every day. I try to do a daily one and a life one. The life is so long that I, I try. I, sometimes I'll do it at night. But it really is about, hey, man, you have it pretty fucking good. Here's nine things that you should be freaking proud of and how great this is. And that if it doesn't go your way, this is stuff I've really had to train myself, Alex, to get into, which is if it did work out the way you want to, there's a bigger plan down the line and to open your mind to that. And that things that you wish you could have gotten back in the day, maybe wasn't the right thing for you to have at that moment. That's yeah, just how I, I operate. I think the gratitude thing, I mean, I, like I do all this stuff. I have a list of questions, the, the kind of same thing, you know, that every day I, they pop up in my thing, you know, I ask myself questions. I go out and do breathing exercises. I go to the beach, do yoga. I do the ice. I, have, I break my life down and around all these little things that I build into my life to keep me from being uh, depressed and angry and and not that it it, it works 100 percent, but it's like gosh i i don't know it, that's the other thing i guess about when we were talking about the addiction thing it's like bro we're all working the program yeah. i mean whether you're addicted or not we're all working the program if you're not working the program that's what i'm saying like i i don't totally trust people who aren't sober because it's like how are you not working the program? That's the only way I get through life is working, working my program. You know, what do you think about that? I, I think it's interesting. I also know that just, there's just some people that can just do it. And I like, I would love to be one of them. I'm just not them. I don't know why, but they can. I don't know, man. I understand what you're saying that like, cause with sobriety comes this, like this incredible amount of, looking inside yourself and personal inventory that I don't think a lot of people do, but some, maybe they do it in their life in a way that isn't uh, as structured and as obvious as we do it because we realize that if we don't do this, we're going to let the darkness back out. Everybody's interesting, dude. It's like R Rogan is a great example of a guy whose batting average in life is so fucking high. And you're like, how does this guy connect all the time? Is he always like getting on base or hitting a home run? And when he doesn't, it's even that's more successful than others. Who knows what his karmic journey is? It's interesting, I, though. I think about it all the time. Because, again, my next door neighbors, they're the nicest people ever. They would run through a brick wall for you and they just love to go hard in the paint. And it's like, God bless you. Cause that's not me because what starts off with a drink and a toke, a weed goes into Coke and then speed. And then I'm trying to set high scores on Pornhub again. <laughs> and none of that means anything to me anymore. It's wasted energy. Well, you know, the one other thing I, I, I like about what you said is, uh, some people do exhibit a grace and ability to handle uh, life in a way that is just remarkable. And it does seem, you know, like you said, a karmic path. I mean, there, it does seem like there's something about that. And I think you're right about um, 
people like you and I, and, you know, have a certain background or a certain, you know, we all have trauma. Everyone has trauma. That's a given, but we just have a certain recipe that requires us to find a way through that I, I can relate to. And maybe that's why I can, <clears throat> you know, I can relate to a lot of things you're saying and can relate to you personally is because I do feel like you're, you're working the program and I feel like I'm always working the program, you know, I'm I always working it. the program. I, I listen, man. So, you know, that I'm like, I'm really into like the game of life. I, you know, pop culture has demonized so much stuff that I think is super important. One of them is, oh, he plays the game well. And then, oh, well, that means he's like some phony kind of dude. And I go, oh, man, for me, the ability to play the game, like me and you podcast right now, I feel like I talked a little too much and I would like to have heard you too much more maybe in the comment section i'll be like sam let's talk you dumbass i'll be like you know what i didn't play the game of this right i should have gave alex a little more time to talk because i don't get to talk to him as much as i would like and he's got some wonderful things to say that's the game of life uh when i was very young a comic named jimmy schubert pulled me aside and this kind of early where it starts my journey to understand that my wiring isn't serving me anymore and he pulls me aside and goes, dude, you're super funny, dude. I, I've seen funny. You got it. But man, you got the worst attitude ever. You think people owe you something and you think you've accomplished something. And it sounds really mean, but he was 100% correct. I was just not playing the game of life very well because I was playing it the way I was taught. And it, that's not how it goes. And I'm so thankful for Jimmy Schubert for talking, telling me that and being nice enough to give me hard advice and to chill out and just enjoy the journey. And I wish I could pull some of these young cats in Hollywood aside and just go, I've seen people do what you do. It doesn't work. You're, you don't understand the game. You're trying to change this game. You don't change the game. You have to change yourself and beat the game. And by beating the game in a way, you inspire people to change the way they play the game. And that's how you do it. And you just can't do it with some of these young kids because they got a lot of idealistic views of life. But they won't listen to other people because culture is like old people don't know shit. And I do think that's done on purpose. And this is part of this whole thing about the rewriting of history. Right? They just don't want you and your grandparents or you and your grandkids to have the same information. So there's a disconnect and that's done on purpose, but the game of life is everything. And I, like, I just used to want to go to war with people. Now it's just like, you know, that's their journey, bro. I'm out of it. And you, maybe you don't do it the way I want it, or I think it should be done, but God bless you. I wish you luck on that. And uh, I'm going to try to do the best I can. You know, th that's tough because you're touching on a couple of things that, you know, back to, you know, the kind of parenting stuff and, and that kind of thing. And the, the, the one thing that, that I, you know, as I get older, I can kind of relate to is remember the old people, you know, back east when you're, that just seem to have wisdom, you know. And when I think of the wisdom that some of those people had, a lot of times it was, they knew when to shut the fuck up. You know, they just knew when to shut the fuck up. So you'd be off doing something and saying something and you're a young buck, you know, and they just sit there and they just smile and they just kind of like you're doing saying, you know, life will be your teaching. It will be your teacher. You know, I don't have to do it. And that's how I kind of feel with my kids right now. And you know, my oldest, I told him that, you know, cause he was his younger brother was this, this and that. And I was like, Hey, life's going to take care of it. Life's the teacher. You know, I really don't have to do, I don't have to do all the lessons. You know, what do you think of that? I think it's interesting. You know, I do really do believe that unless some major trauma happens, your children are on their path. And like, it's kind of like with a ship where you can kind of like, kind of push it just a little bit. Like the ship veering up, just maybe as a parent, you're like, boop. And it's like, starts to turn that way a little bit more. And that's your job, man. They're coming into this world and they have a path and they want to learn. And your job is to keep them out of horrific trauma that could 
throw them off the train tracks and onto another track. And I, I, you know, like the women in my life all love to watch YouTubes and join groups about parenting and all, all the women I know that have kids, all the women I know. And I go, man, I think you just know it. You just know it. Like there's little things you could use some advice on on how to do this, like how to burp. Nobody teaches you how to that how important burping is to newborns. Like, and you're just gonna be sitting here trying to hear a burp, and you're like, was that a burp? I got, do I keep just going smacking this kid on the back? And it's like you gotta be patient, man. You gotta be patient. And but I do think children are on their path, man. And Look at me, dude. I mean, like my parents, they always were supportive, even when it looked like I was going to pump gas. And when I said I wanted to be a comic, they were like, fuck yeah, anything at this point. Go for it. <laughs> and they always have been supportive. They never, even when they didn't understand it, my father would could not understand the model of entertainment. And, but he was always supportive of it. And he would come watch me perform and, you know, I, I, I've i looked back at some of the ways I've talked about my father and I really regret it uh, because I know that he went through trauma and I should show him some love as a victim and understand that, you know, if he couldn't be an example, he was a wonderful warning. And I saw myself <laughs> becoming my father. And I and like that's why I ran to Alcoholics Anonymous. That's why I ran to recovery because I was doing the exact same thing. I was right on. with everybody. I thought right everybody on. was jealous of me because I was so great. I thought they were thinking about me all the time. One of the greatest moments ever, it was in recovery when it finally dawned on me that nobody's thinking about me and not in a bad way. Nobody's thinking of me. It's such a blessing. I am free. And the, and the killer's in the house, man. The killer's in yeah. the house. When you yeah. realize the killer's in the house, right? Man, you can deal with that a lot quicker. And it's blessing. Yes, I live it, bro. I love. Where did it. you find? Where did you find that? Where did you find the wisdom? Who, who, who did you look to? Looking back, was wise. Anybody? Well, when I was growing up, there was a teacher named Doctor Vors who was just the first person to ever get me, and I realized it. I was like, wow, this guy just lets me go. I was a square peg in a round hole. And I just never fit in school. Never. My brother was very, very good at school. Very good at everything. Was very good. I was not. And when I say they thought I was going to pump gas, I'm not even kidding. That was the expectations of me. Uh, and then I went to college and I was just my father, man. I was just always in survival mode. I had no clue how to deal with women. I had no clue how to deal with anything. And it wasn't until I really, I went out on the road with Vince Vaughn one time. I bombed so hard. I never saw him again. And I had to get right. And I just went on this journey. And then I got a TV show because things were going great. And I started popping these painkillers because I was doing stunts. And then, then it was off to Coke. And then this chick want, wanted me to do speed with her because I had a sex addiction. I was like, okay. I did. And then I off on that for a long time. And then these two baby girls came into my life and I had to survive because this pandemic had just hit. And I was just doing these spiritual shows on Tim Fall Hat and nobody wanted to listen to them. I would get these these things. Dude, we don't want to hear about this stuff. We want to hear about the deep state and all that. And I'm like, man, but these things are like giving me hope. So they're like, hey, man, Rockfin's like, do show. I'm like, OK, I'm going to do a spiritual show. We're in a pandemic. We're in a lockdown. I need the fucking, I, you know, I need to make money. These guys are going to throw me some cash. I'm going to do it. And uh, I've just been on this journey and I've learned so much from people like you and and uh, Birch Driver, Von Gall. These are like people who've made like, uh, you know, Amy Belair, Matt Belair. Like these are people who've like made incredible like, impact on my view of the world and really changed me from this kind of like scorch the earth kaiser sose guy to like you know what man let's just chill by the side of the river and wait till our enemies bodies float by 
And that's kind of where I am right now. Let's just chill. And then my babies came and I hit a rock bottom because I was a tweaker and I had kids. And I was like, I never want to be that person. So I stopped and like, it all, you know, here I am. And every day I only got 24 hours, man. But I like the thought of embarrassing those children just makes me so sad. So I'm like, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to embarrass them in so many other wonderful ways. <laughs> right. You know, like I don't need to fuck gun them. And that's kind of where it is. So zero's really opened my mind. And what's really crazy is like, now I start bringing some people that I, I, I meet on zero on the tinfoil hat. And those numbers get huge numbers because they've gotten to the point where it's like conspiracy leads to spirituality. And that's the blessing. Yeah. And, and like uh, I say the other way around too, you know, <clears throat> it just keeps just going kinda, in a loop, right? It just keeps going. Well, in a loop. It, it, it's kind of interesting the other way around. Then uh, I'll, I'll let you get on with your life. But, you know, if, if you just go look at, at the spirituality, you know, you go look at Christianity. Well, there's conspiracy all over the place. 100%. Right? So, so it's like, that's what most people, a lot of people are wrapping themselves around that and saying, that's my spirituality. You know, don't, the, don't, don't mess with my religious beliefs, you know? And from a, if you come at that from a conspiratorial standpoint, you really gain some insights that are valuable. You go, really? What about this? What about this? Have you considered this? What about the Pope? What about, you know, all that stuff. So I, I, it goes the other way too, right? Because you've covered a lot. 100%. 100%. I mean, the most safest place to be is, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I'm open minded to it. And I feel like when you entrench yourself in any ideology, you are setting yourself up to be let down. And if you, you think all these psyops and all this conspiracy is happening to this, why couldn't it be happening to this? And why can't you be part of this this long con going on that's been done on humanity? And but you know people like Jesus and Buddha and all these people, I'm open minded to everything they did. Do I need to go 100%? The story that we're told is 100%. No, but I don't know, man. It's just like you listen to this kind of. I, I'm really in the Christ consciousness. I think Jesus or whatever his name was reached the level of that. But maybe who knows? I'm just open minded to it and I'm open minded to it all. And I can't tell you what it, it's like. Good luck, man. It's like there's so much deceit for decades, centuries, millennium. They've been lying to us. So, you know, you know, all you can do is what feels right. And that's what I do. What what feels good. And what feels good to me is law of attraction, law of abundance. OK, and I believe that I believe that there's one sin and that sin is, did you bring pain and suffering to others? And if you did, you pay a price. If you didn't, I think the universe is yours. You know, it's all about that life review that we're going to face, you know, that the ND ears, the near death experience come back I and love they that. say, and, and you know, the most beautiful thing that they say, Sam, that I always remember is, yeah, baby, you are facing that life review. You are going to be judged for everything you had, every thought you had, and how it affected every person. Oh, yeah. Here's, but here's the trick. The judge is going to be you. You're the judge. Your soul is I'm the really judge. I'm really into this. Now that switches the whole thing. You I mean, oh, it's not some guy up on the cloud saying good or bad it's me i'm responsible for every thought i have and every yelling at my daughter as she's leaving to go see her boyfriend you know i'm responsible for all that you know that's a different that rings true to me at a level all the way down it's like oh i've been hearing that man that you're gonna be like I don't want to do this anymore. And I want to get to a higher level. It's interesting, man. It's one of my favorite conversations I have. What is it? How long are, are we into the Vedics? Right. Are we in the Sumerians? Like all this stuff. It's so interesting to me, Alex, I've kept you too long. I could talk to you forever, Alex. I got to get you back on Tim Paul hat. There's other, just, you know, discussions I'd like to have with you. I'm really into 
what really happened. I know you were talking about the West Memphis three before, but you brought up something earlier today. You didn't think was true. I mean, I'm into all that stuff. We need to get more, have some more discussions. I'll set it up and get you on the show. I'd love to talk yeah. to you one more time. Tell them where they can find you. Cause I know you're putting out this on your, your stuff too. So wherever you want to go. Skeptico. You'll find it, Alex. It's Skeptico. You'll find it. And we got some cool stuff that, uh, you know, we can talk about. I'd love to have you on there sometime. Anytime, you, bro. I know, yeah, really, because right I know time. you're. I know you're always you're always busy. But I'd love to have you on there to talk about some of the stuff that we've talked about in kind of a more uh, structured way. You know, kind of pull yeah. you in because yeah. I, I think that you know it's really cool. The people that really uh, dug into as many of these areas as you have, there's a lot of knowledge to be mined out of there. And one of the things that that kind of frustrates me is so this need to produce all this content, which we all have, but there's like 50 of your shows that I would go back and go, hey, Sam, let's go back and what I, about been, this? And how did you like to do that? Go back and review old episodes, which I'm not. Yes. Asking. Yes. Um, Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll have people request episodes for me to rewatch on uh, StreamYard. I'm in, Alex, see, anytime, see, man. Let, let's that's what up. we're going to do. We're going to have you on, and I'm going to pick like 10, 10 of your favorite episodes, and we're going to talk about All them. right. Let's do it, dude. Well, Alex, you know, I look for. I met you one time. You saw me live. I don't even know how it went that day, but I, I do have a general general love for you, and I appreciate it, and I – Every time we talk, I just feel like a better person after. So thank you for coming on, dude. And you're uh, great. And you're you and you, your stand up is so freaking first rate. I would pay. I, I I love Joe Rogan, greatest of all time as a podcaster, greatest of all time MMA announcer. I wouldn't pay to see his show. I'd pay to see you anytime, anywhere. Him, so let me I know when you. you're in San Diego. I, I, I love Rogan, and I'm blessed. And like, dude, I just there's some guys out there like Joey Diaz, and like there's some young kids coming up too that are great. But I love you, brother, and uh, I look forward to if I'm ever down in San Diego gigging, I'd love to meet up for dinner. Yeah, one time. yeah, great. We'll do it. We'll do All it. All right, for brother. Sure. Love you. I Take got care, your man. email. I'll send you this. We'll talk, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, Zero's just getting started. I want to make this a giant thing, and uh, we love you very much. Take care. Have a great week. Bye.